Hello, I'm Steve Olson, the Manager of Training Services for Mesa. In this video, I'd like to share with you a tip of an alternate way to get assembly flexibility, but through using an iLogic form. Before I dig into how to go about doing this, I want to take a moment and explain why you might go about doing this. So flexibility is great. Flexibility allows you to expose a degree of freedom that is available in a subassembly just by right clicking on it and enabling the flexible option. Sometimes on larger assemblies, you can drag around and there's so many degrees of freedom in that assembly, you can move too fast and inventor can't keep up with you. And occasionally constraints will break and you have to repair them and that can get really frustrating. So what I found is that there is another way to go about this, but instead of using flexible, we drive the constraint offsets through iLogic in an iLogic form. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump into this sub subassembly. And in the subassembly, there is this piston. It actually has a constraint that has an offset value in it and actually has limits to that. If I edit this, you'll see that there is limits to the range of motion there. I'm going to disable both of those. In my parameters, that was insert six. And you can see that there are three parameters associated to insert six. First is the main offset and then the max and min. So this D6 for me is associated to the insert, but it was the original or the main offset. So I'm gonna call this piston offset. And I'm gonna jump back to my top level assembly. In my top level assembly, I'm going to create a user parameter. And I'll call it piston motion. And I'll just let the default value of one millimeter be the value for just for, for right now. So now I want to create a rule that will take that value and push it into that part file. So if I go over to, to iLogic, I'm on my rules tab, I'll create a new rule, call it piston motion. And here, I'm just gonna make those two parameters equal to one another. So underneath my cylinder subassembly, underneath my model parameters, I should be able to find that piston offset. So just here in this tree, I want underneath the cylinder subassembly, found the model parameters, and there's that one I named. So I'm gonna double click on it. It'll add it to my rule. I'm then going to put an equal sign there after that. I'll go to the top of this tree and go to my user parameters, and there's that piston motion parameter that I created. I'm gonna hit save here, close it. So now I want to control this through that parameter, but I wanna give myself an easier way to go about doing that. I can go to my forms tab, create a new form. I can call this range of motion. And I'll put my piston motion parameter in that box. I just grabbed it and dropped it on this line item. You can see it adds it over here to my preview. But what I can do that's kind of interesting here, instead of having to enter a value, if I select this parameter down here in the properties for this parameter, there is this behavior and edit control type being a text box. What I can do is I can change that text box to a slider. And here, underneath that slider properties, I can say what my, what my minimum value is going to be, which I'll say zero. The subassembly has enough range of motion or it has enough room to have a range of motion of 35. And I can set up my step value. So I'll say okay. So now if I use this dialog box, I can then slide this. And you'll see that it will slide through that range of motion. So this isn't necessary to do, but sometimes if you find yourself in a situation where just simply dragging the components around their degrees of freedom has a tendency to break the constraints, 
This is a very easy way to get the same behavior through a iLogic form, an iLogic rule. And the beauty of this is that because you're pushing a value, Inventor can keep up with the calculation, whereas under the old method, sometimes you can drag quickly enough that Inventor actually ends up losing pace with you, gets confused because it's too far behind, and breaks the constraint. Well, that's all for now. Hopefully you found this information helpful and something you can apply in the near future. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to email me at my email address there on the screen. And as always, thanks for watching.